Hello friends! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make abramelin oil. And abramelin oil has a lot of history to it, it's used by ritual occultists, and it's actually originally from the Bible. So there's a bit of history to get into, but I won't get too deep into it. But it's important to understand the roots so you know what this oil is all about. This oil comes from the Book of Abramelin, which is a 15th century Jewish magical text. This book inspired Western magicians like S.L. Mathers of the Golden Dawn and Aleister Crowley. Who is Abramelin? Abramelin was a teacher of Abraham Von Worms. He taught him what he believed was true magic, the holy secrets, that were derived from God himself. This knowledge required you to take an oath to God to remain pure in both spirit and physical form. It requires you to help others, be honest, humble, considerate, basically be a good person. This holy knowledge came from the Kabbalah. The goal of this magic is attainment of true knowledge, which is what inspired ritual ceremonial magic. The true identity of both Abraham and Abramelin is unknown, but there's a lot of research that is done and people speculating exactly where he came from. Um, it was in the Middle East, but exactly what town he came from, who he could have been if that was his real name or he was hiding his identity. There's a lot more that you can look into. But the oil presented in this book is what is known as abramelin oil. It is a ritual ceremonial oil that's used to anoint the forehead, ritual garments, the altar itself, and any ritual tools being used. The original recipe for this oil is contained in this book, the Book of Abramelin, and it's translated from German, so they're doing the best they can to have the exact translations. In ancient times, they had different wordings for things, so it's as accurate as it can be. And I'm going to show you the recipe on the following slide, but just if you want to take a look at this or pause this, you can see the exact recipe as it's written in the book. But I've also typed it out so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. In this portion of the book, they are just talking about what you're going to use the oil for, as I mentioned earlier, for anointing your altar, your ritual garments, your robes, etc. The book goes a lot more into detail because there's a lot more ritual steps you have to take, an oath, all kinds of things, so I recommend you read this book if you want to get to know more about all of this. Just for reference, I'm also going to show you guys this biblical version, the original version of Abramelin oil, and everything in the Bible is measured in shekels, which were coins, so it's measured by the weight of the shekel, and that weighs roughly 11 grams. When you convert shekels to pounds, you can see here it's about 12 pounds, or 6 pounds, and also in kilograms. And it also mentions a hin, and a hin is an ancient Hebrew unit of measurement that translates to roughly 1.5 gallons. It's also worth noting that there's an Aleister Crowley version, and he created his own version using only essential oils, not the actual herbs. And he believed that the oil should burn the skin like fire, so... I would not recommend you do that unless you're not going to be using it on your body because cinnamon essential oil is definitely not safe for the skin. But if you're interested, I'm putting the recipe on the screen just so you can take a look. So now let's get into the ingredients. I've already mentioned them, but just to go over this quickly, the first thing you're going to need is myrrh. And some of you might be familiar with myrrh that comes from the Bible. It's a very ancient resin. And according to this recipe from Jewish tradition, it said that myrrh is believed to be sacred to the Lord, and that's why it was chosen for this specific blend. If you're more interested in the Western occult tradition, uh, Crowley says that the myrrh is attributed to Bina, the Great Mother, who is both the understanding of the magician and that the sorrow and compassion which results from the contemplation of the universe. So for each herb, I'm just going to mention the two different meanings behind each ingredient. For the cinnamon, um, different recipes will either only call for just straight cinnamon, or they will mention cinnamon and cassia. And cassia is actually a type of cinnamon known as sweet cinnamon or Chinese cinnamon. So for the four parts mentioned in the recipe, I'm going to split it into two. Two parts cinnamon and two parts cassia which follows the original biblical version and the Book of Abramelin version. So if you wanted to be more strict and ritual ceremony is very important to you and you wanted to be exact in your recipe, I would split it into two parts, cassia and cinnamon. But if you only have access to regular cinnamon, I mean, it's all about your intention. So if that's what you want to do, just use the one type of cinnamon. And the only meaning derived from um, the Abramelin book is that cinnamon is warming 
The symbolism of cinnamon for Crowley represented Tifereth, the sun, in whom glory and suffering are identical. And Tifereth means glory in Hebrew. I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I apologize, but it is a sixth emanation in the Kabbalistic tree of life. This is the Cassia cinnamon. I happen to have the chip version, but of course you can find it in the bark version. And I just called the other cinnamon stick cinnamon. <laughs> they, they both come in stick form or the bark. Um, the other one is called Ceylon cinnamon, and this is what is known as true cinnamon. The fourth spice or herb that you're going to need is calamus root. And calamus root is true to the Abermelon version, uh, the Crowley version. Sorry, I keep saying Crowley. I watch a lot of British documentaries, but it's Crowley in English, American English. And um, so the Crowley version has galangal root, and so do a few other recipes for abermelon oil. So I chose to go with the original, and I went for calamus root. I also happen to have a big pound of calamus root in my witchy cabinet, so that also might have had something to do with it. But if you want to go with the Crowley version, um, find yourself some galangal, galangal root or essential oil. I should also mention that in the Bible version, it calls for cane, which has been interpreted to calamus. The base for this oil is going to be olive oil, and I'm sure that this is one of the most ancient oils that's used. And in the Bible version, uh, olives are the symbol of domestic felicity and stability. And for the Crowley version, olive is the gift of Minerva, the wisdom of God, and the Logos. To charge this oil, or to consecrate it, you are going to need four white candles. And I'm using these smaller taper candles, but because I already have a big bottle of abermelon oil, so basically this video is just to show you guys, but if I were doing it on my own, off camera, I would use a larger white pillar candles just to really charge the energy into this oil, because this oil is supposed to be the holiest of oils, something that you're going to use to consecrate everything. I use this as sort of a power oil, I like to call it, similar to the version in my book, but obviously this is a very ancient recipe, so um, I would use a bigger candle, but for the purposes of this video, I used a small chime candle. You can also use tea lights if you have those, and if you're using a smaller candle, I would just suggest that you charge this over a few consecutive days. Uh, using magical numbers if you wanted, charge it for three days, or for five days, or for seven days. And I actually just read in a ceremonial magic book that seven is the most used number. I don't know if it was in the Bible or in another occult text, but I like the number seven, so I would charge it for a full week, seven consecutive days of charging your oil with these white candles. You're also going to need a small glass bottle or jar of some sort. And I just chose this beautiful glass jar with a quartz on top, which will just add to the charging portion of this. And, you know, use whatever size jar that you think you're going to use of this oil. So if you're not going to use this very often, I mean, just use a small, like, two-ounce bottle. But if you plan on um, using this all year round, and this is going to be one of your mainstay oils, make a larger jar. And it's very important for this recipe to be accurate if you want to be accurate to these ancient ritual oils. Um, if you want to just do it by intuition, you can do that also, but I know a lot of people like to be strict with their measurements, so I'm measuring this on a scale, and if you want to follow this exact recipe that I'm doing for the exact same size bottle, after I, um, calculated from the shekel <laughs> version, um, I got 12 grams of the Ceylon cinnamon, 12 grams of the cassia cinnamon, and 12 grams of myrrh and then six grams of this calamus root. If you want to make a larger batch, just use four parts cinnamon, two parts myrrh, and one part calamus. To charge each ingredient with your intention, I'm going to be burning this over uh, frankincense on a little charcoal disc. And of course, myrrh and frankincense are very spiritual, very holy, ancient resins, so, and also a lot of ceremonial magicians will use frankincense on their altar at all times. So that is why I chose to use frankincense, but if you have a stick um, frankincense scented incense, you can use that also. I'm just running the bottle through it, the candles, and then each of the herbs individually over the smoke. 
And as with all ritual work that you do, it's really important that you create this oil when you're feeling good. This oil will serve as somewhat of a personal power oil that contains highly spiritual and divine energy. So when you're making this oil, you want to make it on a day that you're in high spirits and feel spiritually, emotionally, and physically well also. Um, do not make this if you had a bad day, you just got into an argument with somebody, or if you feel physically sick. Um, I would wait for a day that you feel that you're at your personal best. Uh, really take the time to meditate, relax, and center yourself before you make this. If you want to take a ritual bath and then maybe meditate for 20-30 minutes before you make this, I would really suggest that you do that, especially for this oil, just because of the significance of it. If you work with planetary magic and you like to do things on specific days in accordance with astrology, the planets, it's actually interesting to note that in the book of Abramelin, they don't really believe in that. Um, they do say that there is some power that is held on those days, but that is totally unnecessary to work with planetary energy, which I found interesting because since this book did inspire a lot of ceremonial magicians who really believe in planetary hours, just something interesting to note. So if you feel sick on Thursday and Thursday's a day that you would have originally made this oil, that's fine because according to them, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so start grinding up your herbs one by one. Since this is such a simple recipe and it's only four ingredients, sometimes I suggest that you can charge or put your intention to it at the very end, but it's really important that you do this for each and every single ingredient. So do not use a coffee grinder, do not use pre-powdered cinnamon that you bought at Target or the grocery store. Um, buy each ingredient with the intention of grinding this yourself. So whether it takes you 5, 10, 20 minutes per ingredient, that's what's required for this recipe. So it took me probably about 5 minutes each. Yes, my arm hurt, but <laughs> that's the point of this oil, right? So it doesn't have to be powdered powdered, but very finely ground. I would say, as you can see here, the cinnamon was a probably like a large grind of coffee bean size. Before you start this oil, if you want to learn just a little bit more about the history and the different meanings of the herbs and substitutions, really, uh, there's a really good channel here on YouTube um, called Benabel Wen, and she's written a few books also on tarot and Eastern practices and how they correspond with different occult practices. Different occult practices, and she goes way more into detail about all this stuff and. She actually has a different recipe that uses lemongrass because in the Bible it mentions cane and there's a lot of different interpretations of that. Some people say it's cannabis, calamus, um, cane-like herbs like lemongrass. So you can also put your spin on this recipe. I just wanted to show you guys the base level original four ingredient um, recipe. But if you want to add your own personal ingredients to this, some dragon's blood, something else powerful like that, then go ahead and do that. It's your recipe, make it your own. Since you're going to be the one imbuing all the energy and using this for yourself, go ahead. So for the olive oil, I am also weighing it out. And the original recipe I saw, I think I saw this online before I actually read the book of Abermelon. It says to use half the foregoing weight in olive oil. And my interpretation of that was half the total weight, and the total weight was 40 grams, so half only would have been 20 grams, and that makes no sense. So I put in at least double. That would have only been enough oil to barely soak up the herbs. So I went ahead and weighed out the 84 grams, because even that much oil barely filled the bottle. And there's a lot of herb matter in this, so this is going to be a really, really strong oil. When I originally made this oil for myself, I have another bottle, um, I filled the jar maybe like a fourth of the way with herb and the rest olive oil, so the scent isn't very strong. It still has a very strong olive oil scent. So this one I'm going to mix in with mine at the end of the month that I'm going to macerate this, um, just because this is going to be a really potent oil. So if you're making this version that I'm showing you guys here, it's going to be a really strong herb, both metaphysically and fragrance-wise. And just use a little funnel or whatever you want to do to get your herbs into the bottle. And 
they actually crushed up pretty well. Myrrh and frankincense can have a tendency to be very sticky and to stick to the side of to the side of the mortar and pestle, but it was actually worked out pretty well. So just go ahead and fill your jar with this. Just make sure that your jar is big enough to accommodate all of this. I wasn't sure that my jar was going to hold all of these, but it did. Um, I would say it's about a four ounce bottle. So make sure you have a bottle that's four ounces or a little bit bigger for this particular recipe. I originally thought this video was going to be like six or seven minutes just because of the simplicity of it all. And I don't know how I've been talking this long. Usually I will put music over these fast forwarded portions, uh, but here I am chatting away, chatty Aquarius. Anyway, my brain can work a mile a minute. So sometimes I'll have like 20 thoughts at the same time and I either don't get them all out or I jumble them up. And I don't know if I'm being very clear in these videos, but hopefully I've given you guys a lot of historical context and background and enough information to make this oil. Um, but I also wanted to mention, I have here in my notes that um, the Crowley version um, believed that all these ingredients together, the olive oil, the calamus, the cinnamon, and the myrrh represent the entire tree of life. And that anything that this oil touches becomes consecrated and therefore holy. And abramelin oil is also known as holy oil, and using this oil for any magical working is said to manifest your desires with great efficacy. Abramelin promises that this oil will help you fly, become invisible, find treasure, as well as cast effective love spells. Both ceremonial magicians and abramelin have complicated rituals that must be followed to grant you these desires. And since I personally do not follow these practices, I use this oil simply for its anointing and consecration purposes. I consider myself a witch, a practitioner, but I'm not a magician. I love learning about all this stuff and reading as much as I can about all forms of occultism, but I'm not an expert by any means. So if you are a practicing occultist, let me know in the comments if this was accurate to you. How do you use this oil in your ceremonies? So once you've added your olive oil to your jar, as you could see, I used a little chopstick or you can use a skewer to just sort of shimmy those herbs down a little bit because with time the oil will sink down and you want to make sure that the oil is covering and that you're using the specific amount of oil as in the recipe. So put your four candles around your jar and of course these can represent whatever you want them to the four elements the four directions whatever your beliefs are and i'm adding quartz crystal also pointing inwards quartz points that are pointing towards the jar because you're wanting to draw the energy into the oil and quartz is a very ancient stone it's one of the most commonly found stones on the planet and I don't know how many of you guys watched the Pyramid Code on Netflix. They talk a lot about quartz and how it was used in ancient Egypt. Abramelin came from somewhere near Egypt along the Nile, so I just thought that it was a perfect stone to use along with the candles to consecrate this oil. Once the candles have burned down, leave this oil to macerate for four to six weeks before you use it. Hopefully this was useful to you guys. Let me know if you make this. If you guys made it all the way through this video, leave me a little sun emoji down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you like this video and see you next week. Bye.